Today I'm going to show you how to replace the objectively ugly tail lights on your Fiat 500 with the much better looking European ones. Let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to answer all the questions you probably have after doing a bunch of searches trying to figure out how to do this conversion. So what we're doing is replacing these hideous looking things with the European ones that look like this. So first, basics. When ordering, if you have a convertible like I do, this is cut out. If you have a hatchback without the convertible top, this will come straight down. So that's how you can tell at a glance you're ordering the right thing. Now you've probably seen over on 500 Madness, they will sell you a set of European tail lights all ready to go, plug and play. And they charge about $500 for that, which if you're not handy, you don't like tinkering with things, you're not into electronics, have that kind of background, that might be fine. And you might have more money than me, and that seems appealing. I'm cheap and I'm more DIY oriented. So what I did is I went on eBay and ordered from Europe a set of the OEM 500C tail lights and had them shipped here to the US. It didn't take that long. I think it was two weeks or less. So the big difference between the European and the American tail lights is that the European ones do not have a reverse light integrated into them. I think they have them located in the bumper. With the American ones or North American ones, you have to integrate a reverse light somehow. So the way I did that was I went with switchback bulbs, which is an 1157 style base, and it has both white and amber LEDs, and it can be either one. That way you can have your turn signal, you can have your reverse lights, everything works. I've seen some videos where people have done kind of hacky things of just sort of like drilling a hole and shoving an extra light bulb in there. I wanted to try to do that a little bit cleaner and a little bit neater. So I will show you exactly how to do that. The few things you will need to order aside from these tail lights are some 1157 bulb sockets. The ones I got are just simple stamped metal, but they have a third wire soldered on for a ground. Since these are going into a plastic housing, you need that extra ground wire. If you can pick these up locally and you don't want to wait to order them and they only have two wires, it's not a big deal. Just solder a wire onto the outer casing. You're going to need LED bulbs. Here you can spend as little or as much as you want. You're gonna need an 1157 style base, either white or red. I don't think it really matters. It's going in the red lens, so it'll be red either way. And then you'll need the, an 1157 style bulb that I just described, amber and clear. Obviously you're gonna need a pair of each. Then you're going to need some resistors. And that is because since we're switching to LED, you want to trick the ECU into thinking that you have incandescent bulbs. If you don't have the resistors, it will think your bulb is burned out. So I got eight ohm, 50 watt, but I don't think it really matters the impedance if you get six ohm, eight ohm, 10 ohm, 12 ohm. You know, I'm not sure what the range is, but I think anything in that area will pretty much work. You'll also need to buy five pin flat plugs. And you'll look on Amazon, eBay, any of those places, you're gonna see them. And I think any of them are about the same and they'll all work. Okay, and a word about resistor mounting. My original plan was going to be to run extra long wires into the body of the car and attach the resistors inside the trunk compartment. I scratched that idea because there was no good way to run the wires in without drilling a hole. And once I got into the trunk compartment, I didn't have much room, especially on the left side of the car because I have the Beats audio system and it has this huge subwoofer right in the way. So then plan B was just splice into the wiring harness in the car, not run the extra wires in. I still run into the problem with the subwoofer being in the wrong way. And I didn't like the idea of hacking up the factory wiring harness. So I ended up mounting them underneath down in this area of the tail light. And that seemed to work the best. So that's the route I would go. For the wiring, I drew this up. I'll probably make a little bit cleaner version of it and I will share that right here. Feel free to screen cap this and save it to your phone. One thing to note, however, the wires on my plugs, the colors I have, red, black, blue, yellow, gray, I looked around and not all of them have those same colors. So go off of the numbers, not the colors, unless you're sure your plug is laid out the same as mine. And the same goes for the sockets. Mine were white, blue, and green. 
yours may not be. You'll have to connect a power supply to your bulb, possibly, figure out which one is the amber and which one is the white. On mine, it just so inconveniently happened to be that the white wire was the amber bulb and the blue wire was the white bulb. It would have been really cool if it was white was white, but that's just the way it came. So really the hard part is just getting all the parts you need, all the little bits and pieces, making all the connections. I soldered everything, heat shrink tube, over the connections to keep it as waterproof as I could. You could also use just crimp on butt connectors. It'd be better if you got the kind that you could heat shrink down to seal them. Uh, there's any number of ways you could do it. I just feel more comfortable soldering, so that's what I did. So let's go to the basement and I'll show how I wired these all up. Okay, we are inside now and I'm gonna show you everything I had to do to get these new tail lights hooked up. So real quick, how I figure these out, and these do only go one way because You'll see this bump is higher up than that one, and these notches are at different levels. They only go one way. I've just got a little power supply here. It's only nine volts, but that's good enough for LEDs if you just want to confirm which is which. White is amber. Blue is white. Would have been nice if the white wire was the white light, but it didn't turn out that way. So just got to make a note of that. Make sure yours are the same as mine. Otherwise you might have white turn signals and amber reverse lights. These are the dilemmas you run into. These have a four pin plug. Factory is a five pin plug. And that is because the reverse lights are not integrated into these tail lights. So that is what all this work is for. You could just get a four pin to five pin connector wired up correctly tape off the reverse light, put in your resistors, and you'd work fine without all this extra work, but you would have to live without reverse lights or rig auxiliary ones up like under the bumper or something. I'm sure in states that have inspections, unlike the anarchy state of Iowa, they would probably want to see that you have reverse lights. But So up here is your factory brake and tail light socket. It's already set up for one of these. Pop it in, you're done. That's the easy part. The hard part is down here. This has a single pole and you're going to need two poles and that's where this comes in. You just need to put this in here and that is the tricky part. But I've already done one and here's what it entails. I basically cut all three of these off down here low, pull off all of this, drill out this hole a tiny bit bigger, drill out these holes a tiny bit bigger for the wires and then you're basically there. I'm going to do that real quick on this one so you can just kind of see how I pull it apart. It's not difficult but just so you can see how it's done. that portion completed. I went back in with a utility knife and just kind of shaved everything down and also took off the lips up here to stick up. So the next step is you want to get this in here. So you'll have to drill a small wire hole in the bottom. So you just have to fit this in here and as you can see the size is just a little bit smaller. So all you got to do is just run a drill bit through here that's the same size as this. So let's go out to the drill press and I'll get this drilled out, the large hole, the through hole, and then show you what I do about these. First, I'm just going to take a 1 8 inch drill bit and just drill out three of these four holes a little bigger so I can get wires through. Right, so I need to go 11 16 You could also do this with a Dremel tool with some sandpaper or a little grinding disc or something, but I like to do the more dangerous way. I suppose I should say don't try that at home, but I don't care what you do. So if you've made it all the way to the bottom, you'll see it'll leave a little divot. So now you know that's the center. And there's a quarter inch clearance hole for the wires. So we got quarter inch, eighth inch, and 11 sixteenths. So the first thing you'll notice at this point is that this socket will be a little bit loose. 
So there's a couple ways you could handle that. One would be to epoxy it in place. One would be to drill your hole like a 64th smaller or something. But the easiest way I found is just to take one of these metal traces that you just removed, cut off a little piece of it, and just jam it in there. So then the next step is to get these contacts into the back. I found the easiest way was with little quick disconnect crimp on connectors like these. I did experiment and you can solder to this. The problem is that's gonna generate a lot of heat and it's probably gonna start melting things. So I thought it seemed like a better bet to just use crimp connectors. So all I did here is I just fed through the three wires I needed through these holes, crimped on the connectors, and I also put some heat shrink tubing over them because they're gonna be pretty close together here and it wouldn't take much for them to come into contact. That's also the reason I cut these so short instead of leaving them longer because then they have all this flexibility. So I've got the lights sitting in my trunk so I can watch them work. So here's tail lights, and then brake, reverse, turn signals, hazards. What if I have reverse and turn signal? So it's actually smart enough to know that when the turn signal comes on to turn off the reverse light. I didn't know that was a feature, but I like it because it makes the turn signal easier to see. But normally you're not going to use that when you're backing up anyway. So what I ended up doing was putting the resistors on the bottom of the tail lights. There's actually quite a bit of room right down here. And I learned that these tail lights are actually designed that water will just run behind them down here. There's no gasket and water is going to come down here through the trunk and everything. So I didn't want anything attached to this because then it would let water in. So I put my resistors there. Those are stainless screws. I think I'll be okay. So here's the finished product. As you can see, it's a huge improvement. I still need to put the inserts in here. Um, I haven't ordered anything yet. Oh, hi, say hi to Izzy, everybody. The factory ones are really expensive and it's just a little piece of plastic with a couple of pieces of double stick tape on the back. And I have a 3D printer. I have a small CNC machine so I can make whatever I want. So I just haven't decided yet if I'm gonna make carbon fiber insert or if I'm gonna make the louvered style, I don't know yet. But for right now, it still looks better than the factory ones, so. I'm gonna live with it. So that wraps it up for this video. We'll see you in the next one.